When you read the Bible, you find that many times the whole of the history of the Bible has turned on what one woman has done, or what a couple of women have done. And, and so, for instance, early on, first book of the Bible, you find that the whole tribe of Judah, from which we get the, the name Jew, um, the, the royal line of that, the, the, from which we get David and then ultimately Jesus, all happened because of a woman's initiative, Tamar, uh, in fact, dressing herself up as a prostitute, uh, enticing her father-in-law, and all of history uh, comes from that. Um, she was doing a better thing than he was, uh, and go read the story in Genesis 38. But what I want to say is, that's just one example. In the book of Exodus, the next book in the Bible, we find that the Pharaoh is trying to wipe out the Israelites, he's killing all the male babies, and it's two midwives who save the baby boys. Um, we could go on the whole of the book of that. Avesta is about one woman saving uh, the Jews. We uh, can think of other times in the Old Testament, Bathsheba actually is the one who persuades David to make Solomon king. The whole dynastic line that, again, all the kings of, of Israel and Judah come from that. Um, you could find there's one time when the royal line is going to be wiped out and Jehosheba uh, is the high priest's daughter who hides King Joash. And so you find time and time again, the Bible presents a really interesting story, a really complex story, but the whole of the history hinges on what one woman does. And when you come to the New Testament, you find it's the same. Uh, Mary accepts the mission of having Jesus in her body uh, as a uh, being mother to the saviour of the world. It's who are the first people at the tomb? Uh, it's the women. You know, Jesus' resurrection from the tomb is arguably the most important event that ever happened in history. And who's there? It's not the guys, it's the girls.